Polls show that Donald Trump and his brand of politics is dominating traditional Reagan-Bush conservatives in appealing to primary voters, which was never more apparent than on last week's debate stage. Candidates like Governor Ron DeSantis and entrepreneur and political newcomer Vivek Ramaswamy stood out on center stage. They hit the highest poll numbers and grabbing headlines with statements like this one. Let's just speak the truth, okay? President Trump, I believe, was the best president of the 21st century. It's a fact. And joining me now is Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. the uh, chance to meet you virtually. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so do you really believe that Donald Trump was the best American president of the 21st century? I do. George Bush, Barack Obama, Joe Biden were the other three presidents in the 21st century. And in my view, judging by results, the fact that we did not get into any major wars, the fact that our economy grew over the same period as much as it did, did make him to date the best president of the 21st century. But I am running to exceed that bar as I expect I will as our next president by taking the America First agenda to the next level and uniting this country in the process. But you you raised your hand uh in arguably the most dramatic moment of the debate when you asked, would you support a nominee if he were a convicted felon? And these were actions he took when he was president. Uh, we know that the trial now is set to begin the day before Super Tuesday. Won't that make it even more difficult for him to be an effective, credible standard bearer for the Republican Party? It's my expectation that he will not be convicted. I do have faith in our judicial system as the last bastion of justice, and I do think that these are politicized charges. These are legal charges on legal theories that have really never been levied. And to bring those kinds of unprecedented charges in the middle of an election against a, foreign, against a former president is truly a travesty and sets an awful precedent for our country. And Andrew, I want to be very clear about why I've been so vocal on this. If you look at many of the national polls in the next last couple of days, I'm polling in second place to Trump. It would be a lot easier for me if Donald Trump were eliminated from competition. But I think that is why it is so important as his competitor in this race that I take a principled stand and say this is going to be a disaster, whether Democrat or Republican. We do not want to become a political movement where the party in power uses police force to indict its political opponents in the middle of an election. That's not how we do it in the United States of America. The people of this country get to decide who governs, and I want to keep it that way. That's why I've been so vocal on this topic. Well, you told Chuck Todd uh, this about yeah. what you would do, what you would have done if you were in Mike Pence's position uh, on January 6th. Here's what I would have said. We need single day voting on election day. We need paper ballots and we need government issued ID matching the voter file. And if we achieve that, then we have achieved victory and we should not have any further complaint about election integrity. So what would, so what I would, would have you driven have done it through the Senate? So what would you have done at, with Mike Pence? You would have so not capacity, certified the election? So in, in my capacity as president of the Senate, I would have led through that level of reform. Then on that condition, certified the election results. So that means you would not have certified the results that night before midnight on January 6th. While that was your constitutional obligation, what if Kamala Harris did that? What if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris uh, to be clear, you, Would she have that same authority? To be clear, I stand by what I said. Uh, but how could you get legislation yeah. through, sir, in, you know, that kind of legislation through in time to certify the election? You would be violating your oath as vice president. There would president. have been... So, so I respectfully disagree, Andrea. I stand by what I said in that interview, not what you just said that I said. I said that that's exactly what I would have delivered and then use that as an opportunity for heroism to reunite this country because there are two preconditions for the health of our constitutional republic. One is the peaceful transition of power. The other is public confidence in our elections. And when those come into conflict, that was a rare opportunity for heroism that I think Mike Pence missed. And I do think that this is a feasible national compromise on this issue. Election day is a holiday, single day voting with paper ballots and government issued voter ID matches the voter file. And yes, I do think, though Chris Christie and Mike Pence criticized me yesterday, I'd love to educate them on the fact that the U.S. federal government can set minimal standards for elections. Look at the American Confidence in Elections Act that is now pending in Congress. You could but, use actually funds through the Help America Vote Act to be able to say that those are minimum standards we set. That, takes that is time, how we sir. move this nation forward. Well, with, I think that actually there have been bills respect, that have been passed through respect, Congress through much faster periods of time. 
But the Capitol was under attack. They were trying to complete it within that calendar day, as is constitutionally mandated. That's not the time to start proposing legislation. So I would have begun, I, I would have begun on November 5th. And I've said this before, Andrea. I would have begun on November cons- 2020. Well, that's not what you said during the debate. I would have begun in, in November 2020. Oh, that's exactly what I said. And I've said this for months now. I would have we would have never gotten to that point had I been in power, either as vice president or the U.S. president. We would have never gotten to that point. And I think what happened on January 6th is a stain on our history. It's my job as the next U.S. president to make sure we never get there. That came after a year of systematic and pervasive censorship in this country about the origin of COVID-19, about COVID vaccines and lockdowns, about the Hunter Biden laptop story on the eve of an election. And the problem, Andrea, is in the United States, like in any country, if you tell people they cannot speak, that is when they scream. If you tell people they cannot scream, that is when they tear things down. I've said that well, in the days following January 6, 2021. I've said it every step since then. As well, president, I would have never gotten us to that point, and I will lead us forward with a simple national compromise around election integrity every without censorship of speech. That's how we win. Every president in American history has gone forward with a peaceful uh, transfer of power, win or lose. And this president had ample opportunity. There were more than 60 federal cases challenging, and he lost in all of those cases. Uh, let's talk about the hurricane that is now approaching. You've called climate change and that agenda a hoax. You said more people are dying from bad climate change policies than there are of actual climate change. But according to a U.N. agency, extreme weather events compounded by climate change caused the death of two million people between 1970 and 2021. Can you offer a shred of evidence that more than two million people died from converting to clean energy? I can offer clear evidence that the number of climate disaster related deaths is down by 98 percent over the last century. The number of people who died of hurricanes, tornadoes, heat waves and other weather related events in 1920 for every 100 that died then two die today. And the reason why is more plentiful, abundant access to fossil fuels and technology powered by fossil fuels. I can also tell you today, it is a hard fact. None of these things are disputed. Eight times as many people die of cold temperatures than die of warm ones. The right answer to all temperature-related deaths is more plentiful, abundant access to fossil fuels. The Earth is covered by more green surface area today than it was half a century or a century ago because carbon dioxide is plant food. And but, carbon dioxide as a percentage of the atmosphere is still at a relative but, low through human say, history. Those are I hard just, facts. And I think we have to acknowledge a- those facts when having this debate. Well, there's a hard fact of the hurricane that is now approaching. The mayor of three generations, St. Petersburg resident, says he's never seen anything like this, the, the ocean warming. But let me move on to some Andrea, may I I respectfully offer a response to that? And and I mean this with due respect. If someone on the other side were an uneducated person from Arkansas who didn't go to college and offered one weather event as an end of one anecdote to help support a theory of global climate change, you'd laugh off off the stage as a rube for saying they don't follow data. The same shoe has to fit the other foot. Follow the actual data. I'm not talking about one person's opinion. We we talk to professors, academics. You literally uh, just quoted one person's opinion with due respect. That's exactly what you just quoted. And I think that that's what's driving okay. this kind of false narrative as opposed to the facts that I'm citing. Well, and Dr. Michael Mann, whom we interview often and other other professionals in this field. But let's let's move on to some foreign policy questions. You said two weeks ago you're in favor of freezing the current line of control, letting Russia keep the Donbass region as long as Ukraine would give up all attempts to enter NATO. That's Vladimir Putin's basic demand. There's evidence of thousands of Ukrainian children being kidnapped from those areas of Russian control. Murders, atrocities in that area. Isn't that just letting Putin win despite his war crimes? Andrew, you conveniently left out the most important part of the deal, which is what the United States wins out of it. That would only be conditioned on Vladimir Putin exiting his military alliance with China. The Russia-China military alliance is the single greatest threat that the United States faces today. Excuse me, that would be conditioned, you said, on Russia containing control of the land he has grabbed. So China is a whole other question. Yes. Let's move on. So there's a deal. Let's move no, no, on it's to not, China. It's, it's, it's not, Andrea, Andrea, but one second. This wait, is really important me, to understand. Me, I proposed a deal. Up. There are two sides to the deal. Exit the military partnership with China. That's a crucial part of the deal that I would do. In terms of China, you've also talked about staying is a a force, a deterrent force in the Taiwan Strait, putting more military in until you said we would be independent 
on superconductors in 19, in, excuse me, 2028. And at that point, we should pull out and Taiwan would be on its own. Let me play for you what Nikki Haley has said about what you've said about our allies. That's not what I've said, but, but you can you can play Nikki Haley's lies. You, sure. you said we, yeah. you said that we should send destroyers through the Taiwan Strait once a week, keep ramping up yes. naval deployments in the South China Sea to essentially deter China from trying to take over Taiwan until we have achieved semiconductor independence by the end of your first term in 2008. At and which point? It would no longer be in our self-interest to stop China. Is that the way the U.S. Under That's not what I said. I, I, I literally, I will, I will, I will give you word for word what I said. At which point we will resume our position of strategic ambiguity. Which Andrea, I will remind you, is our position towards Taiwan today? The U.S. Neither party even recognizes Taiwan as a nation right now. Both parties embrace the one I'm China well policy well as we speak. With the position. Well, that's a good that thing because then you would know that what I've said. But that that exactly. Does not so that, deal so with I'm the, the only presidential that, candidate, Andrea. I'm the only presidential candidate who has said we will defend Taiwan. Nobody's had the courage to say it. And then I said after we achieve semiconductor independence, we will resume our current posture of strategic is, ambiguity. Which is and so I think it's important we emotional. have these debates honestly. Yeah, 2028. That is, is correct. Which is emotional. exactly what it is today. Which is which is exactly what it is today. It's a notional commitment Nikki, to strategic let me ambiguity. Let Nikki Haley yeah. said about your position on Ukraine, Israel. Taiwan. Yeah, it's a lie. Go ahead and play it. Yeah. We do need friends. We do need allies. We should never stop doing that. And his idea of breaking the partnership with Israel. Israel's the first line of defense for Iran. We have a partnership with Israel because they're the front line of defense to Islamic terrorism. We have a front line of defense with Ukraine because they are keeping Putin from doing what he said, which is the next stop is Poland and the Baltics. And that's a world war. That is what we're trying to prevent. Would you respond to her? Yeah, with due respect, my concern is that our steps and NATO's steps right now are marching us closer to world war by driving Russia further into China's hands at a time when we have no visibility into what Russia's red lines are. And further, at a moment when Russia has a larger nuclear stockpile and super EMP capabilities and hypersonic missile capabilities ahead of that of the U.S. And so what I've said is I would end that war, but on terms that end the Russia-China partnership. That is also how we deter Xi Jinping from going after Taiwan. Because right now, Xi Jinping's bet is that the U.S. will not want to go for two different allied nuclear superpowers at the same time. But if Russia is no longer in China's camp, then Xi Jinping is going to have to think twice before going after Taiwan. And I will well, repeat, indeed. I'm the only <laughs> presidential candidate who has affirmatively said we will defend Taiwan because we have greater national interests there than we do in Ukraine. And I do not think that this war advances American interests. We should focus on the real enemy that is communist China. And that's how I orient my foreign policy. I would love to have another conversation about how you would end the Russian and Chinese partnership, which uh, goes well beyond yes. Ukraine and, and goes into a deep-rooted partnership. But let me ask you finally about Eminem. They've sent you a cease and desist through the music licensing company to stop using Lose Yourself on the Trail. Have yes. you agreed to move on? Yeah, look, I think that uh, I'll, I'll respect his wishes, but I would just say, will the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> Eminem in his rise used to be a guy who actually stood up to the establishment and said the things that the establishment didn't want him to say. I think the fact that my political viewpoints may differ from his, I think people change over the course of their lives. But I have hope for him that he will one day re rediscover the renegade that made him great, and I'm rooting for that success in his life. Well, Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you for your time today. We To be continued, let's have more more opportunity to talk, and good luck out there on the campaign. I'd trail. enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. I appreciate it. And coming.